tokenism is a practice that's dominant in the workplace, but also sifts into other aspects of our personal lives. Today, we discuss tokenism and how it sets our society backwards. Welcome to Why Women Roundtable Conversation, powered by KNO for International Women's Month. I'm Tomike Adeoye, your host. Welcome, my powerful women, to Why Women Roundtable Conversation. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it should be because how we start the show is really exciting. <laughs> but before we do that, I'll introduce my beautiful women who are seated right here at the round table. We have Fumi Abiola, head of marketing, Masila Motors. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, we have Ezine Eziani, COO, MBRC, and founder, Shikan Nigeria. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. We have Fi Toyo, East and West Africa marketing manager, Glaxo Smith Klein. You almost gave me that tongue twister. I said, no, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to finish it before you destroy me. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Tony. Thank you. And of course, we have Elizabeth Onyama, advanced clinical weight loss practitioner. <laughs> Welcome. Thank and you it's so time much. to welcome the very important person on this show, which is Chef Emeka. Ooh. Welcome, Ooh. Chef Emeka. Welcome, <laughs> Okay, so today I have a roast tomato soup for you <laughs> simply put naturally tasty ingredients in there um, so just roasted the, the tomatoes looks um, good very <laughs> simply <laughs> um, <laughs> put some paprika in there um, put some yogurt some basil mm. um, so naturally tasty obviously we used Christ. some claw cubes and made a stock and then we blended that down and I'm serving it today with a nice bit of uh, toast spaghetti. So hopefully you. you enjoy that. So thank you. What appetite, well. ladies? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say it out loud now. Let me hear you. Don't swallow it. It's very creamy. Okay, so now that we've bribed you, just kidding. <laughs> Are we ready for the conversation? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so diving straight into it. I mean, many would say that tokenism does not exist, but truth is, we cannot ignore the fact that it it does exist. We have had cases where at political gatherings or at church gatherings, you know, you have board filled with men, and then they just come together and say, ah. This board, you know, say this women see us now, they go talk, say no woman day here. Let's just put a woman so that at least she's just there as a figurehead, not even necessarily about the qualification or anything. It just to put her there. So it does exist. But have you experienced it firsthand? Or do you know someone who has experienced it? So I can think back to my days in primary school, right? This whole phenomenon of tokenism tokenism started quite early. Mm. You you know, then you do all these debates, you go and represent your school in debates, and sometimes it was like an all-male panel, and then you have one teacher say, let's just put one, <laughs> let's just put one girl sure. there, there's no girl there. So even from an early age, it's something mm. that, you know, is so ingrained in the fabric of our society and even in the world at large. So it's something that I've seen. Luckily, it hasn't happened to me in my career, at least since I left school, but I, I, I've seen this happen so many times. Mm. Yeah. So it truly does yeah. exist. Honestly, I'm never, like, I can't recall any particular experience or even from a friend or somebody that has um, gone through stuff like that. Mm. But even if I'm, I know that if I'm placed in such a position, because even if I can't talk much about an experience or someone else's experience, I sure don't know how I would feel if mm. I do find out at the end of the day mm. that I'm being placed in a place. <laughs> because... <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to, like... So a box. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm going to... I'm mm. going to be... Re like, I'm thinking about it right now, and it's not such a very beautiful feeling, mm. you know? So, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to go do something really crazy and probably just walk out of that place or something, because <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm just being honest here, because I would, mm. if I have to be placed somewhere, then I want to be know I'm being placed there based on merit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And not just because they are trying to like create an impression to mm. people I don't even know. Mm. And that, that's, Actually. Not, that's not nice yeah, if it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the truth is, you know, in this world of diversity now, 
that's something that happens a lot now that you know everyone is going oh we must look good in mm. the face of everybody rather than just having maybe only men oh no why don't you introduce the women so mm. i remember a few years ago when we were going to hold a conference uh, she can do more conference where we feature you know women who have done exceptionally well in their industries especially male dominated industries mm. i went to a few stem companies different stem companies to do a data analysis to know and we figured that that a lot of these people even on the board didn't have women and mm. the few women who were there when we questioned it we we're like okay so how did they get there when we interviewed them we found that some of them were just either admin or something mm. but at some point because for a, for a long time they had only men as mm. board members so it, it felt like oh our organization does not accept diversity because if we don't have a woman there that means we're not you know we're not broad so to say so i i i, I noticed that then and we talked about it and during our conference and some time later we still spoke more on on that so it's, it's a case that happens a mm. whole lot and picking up so. on what you said i mean this could definitely bring about several issues. The fact that you said the organizations where women are at occupying top positions just because, oh, let's put a woman at this position. Let's talk about some of the issues that could arise from this. Because <laughs> if you have somebody who is not qualified, filling Number a position... One, such a person exactly. will never be able to grow. Exactly. Do you understand? Like, to think about it, knowing that being placed in a board... And then I'm just being placed there because I'm just some kind of figurehead, mm. you know? And then when it comes to a period where maybe the present, like there won't be any room for you to grow. You can't get better. You're just going to remain there, redundant, mm. giving nothing. Then afterwards, when they're done with you, they dump you. Like, actually, mm. but I think what's that? It also depends on the perspective. What okay. if we look at it like giving an opportunity actually to a woman to show that she does have her role to play there. Would they but I think it's, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, I know you could always look at things on the negative side. Mm. True. But then if I'm given an opportunity mm -hmm. to go there as a woman and you just place me there to be a figurehead, I would show you mm -hmm. that, that I that have my place here. True. So mm. I would use that opportunity to do something, knowing yes. that I'm also opening up doors for other people. So that's another way to look at it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Because the truth is, whether or not these things will not stop, it won't end here, it won't mm. end now. It's something that will always continue. And something I say to people is, women most times we like to take the back seats yeah. so when opportunities come you don't see a woman throwing herself out for this opportunity rather you see more men throwing out themselves so there's a vacancy for instance you know coming from the hr background okay that's a vacancy and you say to few women who are recruiting so get ready now these people are already waiting mm. rather than you know and, and most times you see that the cvs or the males that will be coming in are from men Mm -hmm. And these men sometimes may not be so qualified for that That's role. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because a woman feels, oh, mm -hmm. I'll be judged if I step forward or I, I might be criticized, mm -hmm. now she takes the back seat. And when she does that, understanding that there are so many things too, so many hurdles or so many things that would distract her, have her time running up the ladder children family and all yes. that so and she wants to take out time to be more qualified women would like to be more qualified before we step into an opportunity True. and that's why it looks like the men are always in front so i say to women look when you see an opportunity go take all out it. take it yes if you fail you learn on the job yes. so just take the opportunity and move because when you don't move we have more men and when you have more men how do we talk about yes. gender equality True. in the future True. and so, you've yeah. just highlighted one of the ways we can tackle this but are there other ways <laughs> in which we can tackle this issue at hand? I think it starts from the society. Mm -hmm. So when I... Have you seen those textbooks that were flying around social media that says daddy goes to work and then mommy is at home washing plates? Mm -hmm. If a child is taught that when they grow up, what do you expect? So I think as parents, first of all, we need to teach our children that male, female, your gender does not have anything to do with mm -hmm. your success and how far you can go you know, in your career. We also need to show different images in our text. We need to look at the curriculum. Show women as pilots, show yeah. women as soldiers, yeah. as doctors, men as nurses, right? There should mm. be no um, profession that is tied to a certain gender. So gender. start with that sure. before we go into the offices. And then also look at politics. If you don't have, we have token women in politics, let's be honest. If you don't have 50-50 inclusion in politics, then those policies to be able to enable this to happen will not 
they yeah. just won't happen, right? Yeah. And then men need to be engaged in the conversation. That's something that we miss out on. If it's just women that are leading this whole conversation yeah. of inclusion. This is yeah. what you're saying, actually. I think that we're influenced by what we see. So, for example, in the marketing space, mm. you have a role to play as well. Yeah. So when we're promoting products, are we always promoting women in the kitchen, or what exactly are we showing people that women can do? So we can change the narrative as well. Absolutely. Same as the media. So we need mm -hmm. to start telling stories of these women yeah. who are breaking ground, so that mm. people can believe that it is possible. Because I like to use myself as an example. I come from a background where my grandmother started off as a housewife, but she went to school while she was a housewife, and then. She became, you know, director on the board of several banks. So this, for me, is a model. You can't tell me that a woman cannot do it because no. this is what I grew up seeing. Yes. Yes. I knew it was possible. In my yes. mind, there's no other way yes. to be a woman than to be mm. able to achieve great things. Sure. You know. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, we have to go on a quick break right now. This conversation okay. is really heated, and I know we still want to dive into, <laughs> <laughs> into <laughs> our sim. You are still watching Why Women Roundtable Conversation, powered by Knot. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You are still watching Why Women Roundtable Conversation for International Women's Month, powered by KNA. I have my power women here, and it's time for the next thing on our menu. We can take a wild guess. What's coming? Chef Emeka. Chef Emeka. Yeah. What's, what's coming through? Take a wild guess. <laughs> Chef, don't tell me. You made it too easy for them. I was telling them to guess. <laughs> yes, I wouldn't have got this like Mashed, mashed potatoes. And, and, yeah. and they're like um, some steak. I don't know. It's not steak. What is no, it? Is that ribs? Re, um, pork. Lamb shank. There's a black plate. Ingredients. Mm. Well, we can guess what we're having. Hmm. Tough. Mm. Mm. <laughs> avocado. No. Um, is this not avocado? Is that nope. I can see green peas. Green peas. Well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're having lamb. Lamb chops. Oh, okay. Oh. Some <laughs> lamb chops. Um, mashed potatoes. Okay. Nice peas. Onion. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll spring on you. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what we're having. Just some um, some pan seared mm. chops yeah. and mm. some cheese, and obviously we use some kno um, to make some naturally tasty um, jus to go with it. Thank you. 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 Really nice. This is where I feel like telling you to just continue the conversation. Let me enjoy this delicious. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Yeah, it's nice. It is really nice. Like I'll do anything for you. For the keys and everything. So nice. Yeah. Like. That's good. It's so, yeah, so funny. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. Yeah, it is. Don't worry. It's and let me just do the talking. Mm, so that's no, it's okay. Okay. Gladly. Okay. <laughs> All right. And speaking of the workplace now, you know, gender differences definitely affect the way women function. Now, what are some of the impacts of this? I mean, the way a man would function is obviously different from the way a woman would function, if we're being completely honest. But, you know, when society puts that ban and puts all of that in place and doesn't even put a structure that enables you to function to your fullest, it tends to affect a lot of things in the workplace. So what are some of the impacts? I mean, we're women and we work. So you as a woman, how does this impact we're, having, we're just having a conversation. Oh, about what? <laughs> about oh, I think I heard that. <laughs> yeah. About pregnancy, childbirth, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. See, I was going to reach there. Marriage, kids, everything is beautiful, right? <laughs> but I feel like it locks you back as a woman a couple of years. Sure. Yeah, it does. Because a man going into the office, I can stay till midnight. He doesn't care what's happening at home. Yeah, exactly. But as a woman, you have to go home at a certain time mm -hmm. to pick, do school runs, make sure dinner's on the table, mm, yeah. you know, depending on the sort of family that you come from. So I think that can be limiting in terms sure. of the fact that you might not be able to give 150% like a man because of some of your other commitments exactly. that your husband may not have to face. Right. And another thing is maternity leave. 
So that four mm. to six months absence, a lot can happen in four to six exactly. months. Exactly. Do you get? I know people that have gone for maternity leave, and during that time, their mates were promoted. Yeah. yeah. But they did not have that opportunity to make some just because they were ah, making a family. Exactly. So. Those are some of the things. So you find as a woman, you have to double and overcompensate exactly. yeah. yes. for those things, for that lost time. The process is transparent. Mm -hmm. I think it helps. It goes a long way, really. If we know what the criteria for promotion is, then there's no discussion about it. Exactly. I qualify or I don't qualify. Exactly. And then also in organizations, you know, there should be a safe space where women can actually go and complain on some of the issues that they face. Yes. You know, so whenever they're victims of discrimination, which support system is mm -hmm. in place to fight these battles for yeah. them. Yeah, sure. I agree. Yeah. Another thing that a lot of companies have started is the women leadership initiatives, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, where I work, you know, we have the body. And so every 8th of March, you know, we have International Women's Day celebration, there are panel discussions, which is good, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. the, Conversation needs to be ongoing and men need to be involved, you know, so that's something that's very important. In addition to what we said about, um, you know, the safe spaces. So I think that organizations really need to share that and forget about tokenism and now look at more of 50-50 diversity and inclusion. So I was very happy when I saw, you know, for example, Guinness Niger recently shared their um, uh, leadership team, right? And 50% of the leaders there were women. I literally counted. I was like, oh, wow, half. You know, other companies as well, when you look at their board, 50-50 women. And I heard something. We did not pick them because they were women. Mm. We picked them because they were the best people wow. for the yes, job. Yes. But one of the things that companies can start to do, you know, we've heard about graduate trainee programs. Mm. What about women leadership programs where you bring in graduates, you know, from when they're young and start to actually... Not show them. them. Yeah, yes. I was going to talk about that career progression within an organization. I mean... Why should they bring somebody as a figurehead to come and take over a position mm. when they obviously have over the years have had like you know who have stayed over the years Almost and they've been allowed life. to progress, you know, in that same organization. You get me? So such a person, if over the years has, you know, done everything right and you know is qualified for whatever position there is, then she should take it up. Do you understand? That way they don't have to pay somebody or, you know, like, you know, put somebody's name on the payroll and know that she's just been paid because she's trying to. That's like, to me, I think it's a waste of resources, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. So if there's going to be career progression within the organization where people can grow, women can grow mm -hmm. up to that height, then it should be highly encouraged, mm -hmm. honestly. I'm just going to take it from another perspective. Since okay. we've all talked about from the organizational yes. point of view. So now as women, part of the things that would help is for me, or maybe I shouldn't you know, say general, <laughs> for me, <laughs> what I have done actually is to see my life, my entire life as a project. Mm. So with that, it helps me stay more focused and organized. Yes. So I know that this is a time I leave the house. This is the time I get off work. This is the time that, you know, I need to take care of family. This is the time I need to do certain things, laundry and all. Now, when you understand that your life, everything about your life should be, should be organized as a project, the same way on your job, you have project timelines, you do all of those things. Do it with your family, with your health, with checkup times and yeah. all. Because yeah. when you do this thing, and also if you can seek help, Get help. Sometimes we think, oh, we must Super do human. everything. <laughs> you know, I must be the one to wash the house or I must clean the house. I must yes. cook. The if you can get domestic service, if you can afford yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah, get people who it. can clean the house while you focus on other things. Yeah. If you can really get help. You know, many would say that some of these issues arise because women are financially independent, uh, financially dependent on mm. maybe their men or their parents and all of that. And... At times it's justified because when you have issues like what you went through, where do they expect you to get the money from? How yes. do people expect you to survive? Yes. But how can women attain financial independence? I mean, how do they get to that level where you can stand on your feet and you want to buy something, you don't have to make a phone call? Because truth is, if somebody is calling you every time too and asking you for, <laughs> for money, at some point I'm like, yo, your life is... <laughs> I own you, I rule you, because at the end of the day, I'm taking care of you. True. It, it is the honest yeah. truth, if we're yes. being very honest. But how do we get to that level where we can stand on our feet? I mean, look at you women here today. I know it's not biz with the society that we are in, <laughs> yes. with the way it's hard to make money, but you're still grinding and doing all of it. So how would you advise that women get to this level? So I think it starts from education, really. 
True. First of all, everybody needs to be given access to education yep. because that's the basic. We need to have more role models. So showing other women that it's possible, or younger girls that it's possible, you know, if we have the, you know, Mrs. Ibuku Awashikas of this mm -hmm. world and all of that, these are people that inspire you to want to do more mm -hmm. and to give it your best shot. So when you um, have role models in life, then obviously you can go further. It breaks those mindset limitations because as I said, I don't have certain limitations because of the role models that I was privileged to have in my life. So if everybody has a role model, they can know that this is possible. If this lady can do this, I can, I do, can it. do it myself. Thank I you. have a different perspective. Okay. I love everything you've said. And my take is this, leverage on your passion. Every woman has a passion. There is something you love to do. Look at my story, for instance. Strange story. I read banking and finance in university. I know nothing about being a clinical weight loss consultant. Do you understand? And I just couldn't just imagine having to live my life in a way where I have to tell my husband, hey, um, baby, I want this, um, then I want that. No. So I just kept trying my hands on everything I loved doing. I loved to bake. I tried to bake. I tried baking and selling. It didn't make sense. Then I went ahead to, okay, fine. I love to do makeup. And I tried that. And it wasn't, you know, just like that. But finally, what actually broke the camel's back was I had the personal experience. In the years of putting my hands, trying to do different things, I got pregnant, had kids, became fat, you know, mm -hmm. became ill because I was, I had, pre, I had a condition, pre-diabetes, you know, and then I had this horrible case called sleep apnea. And everywhere I went, the doctors told me it is connected with your weight. Madam, you have to lose weight. What has my weight got to do with what's happening to me? I had to go back to school. Do you understand? And that has what has basically what has fueled my passion. By the time I was done, I said, hell no, no woman is going to be trapped in her body because she has three kids. Do you understand me? No, every woman deserves to be beautiful. So I leveraged on my passion. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When you leverage on your passion, you can monetize it. Honestly, you don't even need to go to school for it. And I think it's actually safe to say that <laughs> You did great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did, you did well. We would be here today if you did not leverage on it. And yes. at the end of the day, they say everything happens for a reason. Yes. Yes. But if you don't see that reason, then nothing is going to happen. True. You saw that this was happening yes. and you decided to make a reason out of it and bring yes. something forth from it. So, yes. yes, what you are going through might not be pleasant as a woman. And it's okay. But the minute you now look at it and say, okay, mm. oh, it's not pleasant, it's not pleasant. What can I do about this? Thank you. You yeah. never can tell what will come out of it. Yes. So always yeah. grab on. Everything is an opportunity for something to happen. So yeah. it's left to you to grab that yes. opportunity and make something happen for yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Find out okay, so I grew up in a very traditional home. Both my parents were there. My dad had a business. Um, and he, he took care of the entire family. However, even though my dad took care of all the bills, my mom was like, I'm going to work. Yeah. Right. So my mom worked up until she retired. But she always told us something. She said, ah, with this one, I married a rich man. I'm still going to work. I'm going to save my coins because anything can, can happen. happen. Sure. I have friends whose husbands have sent them packing. I have friends who have lost their husbands. I also have friends that when they were growing up, dad died. Mom was a housewife. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I have a friend that was very wealthy and the mom had to become a cleaner, mm -hmm. right? Just to send her children to school. So my mom uh, always put it in our heads. You guys must work. You must earn a living. So I think it starts with, you know, us as parents telling our children, both male and female, like, look, you have to get your hands exactly. busy. And then you as a woman, your mindset. Mm -hmm. Don't look at, mindset. some people look at their fathers or their husbands as a meal ticket. Look mm. at it and look, I'm in this world on my own exactly. and I must produce something, right? Yes. Because even the Bible says that a wise man will leave an inheritance for his children's true, children. True. It's not just wise man, wise woman. Mm. Yes. Okay, so let us get that mindset right. And then you pick your struggle or you pick your hustle, sorry. Pick your hustle. She mentioned education, she mentioned passion, mm -hmm. skill set. So look at the in Yoruba, they say, oh, no, come on, what exactly. Too many routes many, to the yeah. market. Yes. To make so, yes. mine is conventional. Mm. Nine to five, and then I have a business as well. For some people, it's, hey, buying and selling. Some people, it's monetizing their passion of makeup and yes. writing, whatever it is. But I what did. you need to do is find it and let your hands be busy and just keep going. Do not despise the days of humble beginnings. Yeah. And save, invest. Most of us don't know how to do these things. So yes. We need to learn mm -hmm. how we need to great. save, how to invest, and just keep educating yourself. Education is not just certificates and school. Exactly. It's also learning what percentage of my income should I invest? Yes. What percentage should I save? Yes. You know? And then also understanding long-term, medium-term, rainy day savings, all of that. So that, for me, is what we need to do as women. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any final yeah. words? Oh, just in addition to yes. everything, 
same because everything you know it's spot on it's just to continue from where mm. you stopped is in doing all of that understanding that empowerment empowerment yes passion and all of that discipline and all but the major thing is as a woman even when you're running your business you must be disciplined mm. because sometimes I've, I've seen women who started up and because it failed be like Mm. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm done. Yeah, Just stay, on, time. stay, stay on it and yeah. stay on the course and know mm. that, yes, you can do more. Thank mm. you very much, my power women. It was a pleasure <laughs> having you. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Thank and you. it's that time of the show where I give you this. <laughs> <laughs> but see, now you're going with a gift box Thank filled you. with lots of gift items. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to strive in your various fields and various sectors. Thank we you. see you and we are waiting yeah. for you. So thank you. <laughs> and thank you thank very you. much, Chef Emeka, for a delicious yeah. meal. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Chef. Really nice. thank thank you. you. <laughs> really your, my heart told myself that my place must not be empty. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's place is still filled up. Yeah. And on that note, I do hope you've been inspired by this conversation. If there's one thing I'm taking home from this, it's the fact that you have the major role to play. Nobody can do it for you. You have yes. to work. You have to be disciplined. You have to feel your passion you have it is you, you. and you alone <laughs> and the she fact that these women are here shows that it's possible for you i'm tomike adelia your host that's it on today's episode of why women roundtable conversation powered by knorr i'll see you some other time <laughs>